Coming at you from the AO Studios, it's the Fade Route with D and Z. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Powered by Riverside FM. Coming at you live from the AO Studio. It's the Fade Route with DNZ IMD, and we've got a great show for you tonight. Hassan Riddick demands a trade. Jaron Duran pulls an Anthony Rendon. And we get a new look. We get a look at the new kickoff rule in the NFL. But we'll begin today's show with the Olympics are over. Yeah, they're really over. So, Biles won gold, Team USA Basketball won gold, and Team USA Women's Soccer won gold, along with a multitude of other storylines. So, Z, what do you take away from the Paris Olympics? Well, we'll start with the fact that uh, I was transfixed by breakdancing. I don't know, but were you? Did you did you watch no, any of that? No, it's stupid. I did watch it, and I thought it was stupid, like... How could you possibly grade this and rate this? I don't know what I'm watching. This I, one guy was spinning on his head. I don't know. Is that good? Are you okay? Like, I don't know. And they were calling each other out. Like, oh, you did that yeah, one twice. Yeah, and then the you other, other thing is your, your opponent stands there and watches you while you do it, which is another weird thing. I don't know. I mean, I think we have better – maybe pickleball should be an Olympic sport. Like, what? why is – I don't get it. I it's don't a good, really you get know, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, you have tennis. Tennis is an Olympic sport. You have badminton is an Olympic sport. You have, you know, table tennis is an Olympic sport. Why the hell not pickleball in 2028 in Los Angeles? Why not? Why not? Now, I couldn't turn away. I, I really could not turn away. I was like slack jawed. I, I could not understand what the hell I was watching. I, I could not. I mean, they seem to be into it. So, so kudos to you guys. It wasn't boring. Like I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't like steeplechase or any of the cycling. I, I just, I was transfixed, and it was like, this is terrible. Like, this is absolutely terrible. But you know, like, I, it's like a car accident. You just, could, I was rubbernecking. I was rubbernecking during the <laughs> Olympics. So there's that. Um, it is out of the Olympics. It's one and done. So oh, it's good. not. Yeah, that's, it's out in 2028. Um, that's so there's that. Uh, the other thing I got from this is that, you know, the U.S., as per usual, is dominant in track and field, 34 total medals. You're looking at swimming, 28 total medals. They tied with China with 40 gold medals overall, 126 total medals. It, it's what was expected you know that that's what i got from this olympiad is that it was what was expected now china dominated in swimming like they they, in diving particularly so they definitely were a force to be reckoned with there um usa basketball men's and women's both took home the gold as many people expected we were concerned Everything broke right. Everything bro- absolutely broke right. There were no injuries. There, were, there was nothing to be concerned about in the totality. You know, leading up to it, sure, you're going to be concerned. You're throwing out 39-year-olds, 35-year-olds, and all in all, it went fine. But I was most impressed by... The relay teams, mm. right? So they were they were fantastic. I mean, you had instances where, in both swimming and in track and field, that they had to change the shot because the American was so far ahead that you couldn't see who was in second. Right? That is the level of dominance and the level of, of athletic prowess that you're dealing with. Now, you had a mixed bag. You know, for all the success, you had some guys who, you know, even though 
there was a, a little bit of success, you can say the they didn't live up to the expectation. I'm looking at Noah Lyles. You talk all that shit. I expect two gold medals. He well, gets and this the, dude also got COVID. He, he also got COVID. Anybody, now that was a, that was dirty. Well, uh, the crazy thing is that the doctor is like, "Nah, you're good." <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Like <laughs> this dude was spiking 104 fever on the track. Dude could have died. Like that, you know. That's a little. You're, you're lucky. Like they're, you're very lucky that you didn't end up with a huge malpractice lawsuit there, because you know that that's serious. That's absolutely serious. But you know, in all all in all, like you kind of can excuse it because he had COVID. But like, it, it's disappointing. But when you look at the totality, when you look at the performances all around, it was expected. Everything that we expected to do well in. As a nation, we did well in, and every place that we expected to struggle, we struggled. But in the end, top medal count tied with China for the most goals. I would say, all in all, you call this a, a successful Olympian. Yeah, so I'm going to take a little different route on it. I've I've actually been reading a lot of articles uh, about the Olympics, and um, I'm a little t- I'm a little tainted and tarnished by it. So apparently the gold medals aren't gold. Okay? So all this time, I thought the gold medals are gold. They're not. They're actually mostly silver. There's only <laughs> about 5% gold in there. Huh? So a gold medal, its actual value is around $950. Okay? A silver medal is like in the $400 means, and the bronze medal is only about 13 bucks. Huh? Yeah. What? Now, here's the other shit kicker here. If you were to... Now, this is just for the United States. Yeah. If you were to win a gold medal for the United States of America, you get around $37,000 per gold medal. Mm-hmm. You get about 22005 for every silver, and you get $15,000 for every bronze. Now, Z, hear me out here. I'm, I'm listening. To get... To be an Olympian, you must train rigorously for four years. That shit ain't cheap. No. So I'm going to train for four years, and the reward is a medal that's not even gold, and I'm only getting 37500 And now I get it. I get it. It's not about the money. It's 100% about representing your country and being one of the best athletes on the planet. However, you're pretty much telling me that only rich people can compete if you're for the United States, right? Because how could Joe Schmo and, and Susie Liu afford to train their daughter or train their son to the level of a Katie Ledecky or a Michael Phelps and then go out there send their kid around the country for qualifying events, then send their kid off to another country to compete and sustain living and sustain life. And now if you look at other countries, for example, in, let me see if I got this right. In Serbia and Malaysia, they pay around 200 to 215 thousand dollars per gold medal huh well how are we so far behind this uh i just i don't know it kind of really tainted me on this i really look at the olympics a lot differently now and i i just um it, it's just tarnished the whole thing for me i'm just not i'm just not interested i used to be interested in just and it, it's just I, I, it, and if you're playing for America, it's incredibly difficult for you to be able to sustain that lifestyle, get there, win, and then that's – now granted, Michael Phelps, Simone Biles, the best athletes we have, right? They have other deals going on, clearly. Right. Like they're not just – but they had to get to that point. And how are they getting to that point without the rigorous training, paying a trainer – Going all over the country, doing all this stuff. I just, I, I, I don't get it. Meanwhile, Singapore, single, Singapore, Z, 
a country that has never won a gold medal. And the reading is right. Pays athletes in 2021, the country awarded gold medalist $737,000 for someone who wins a gold medal for, for Singapore where they never won a gold medal. Well, <laughs> got to get on that shit. Oh, Here they haven't go. won since 2012. That was the last time they got a gold medalist. But I think we owe our athletes, I guess, more for accomplishing that, representing your country. And I just don't, I don't see how the common person could go to the Olympics for Team USA. Well, no, it's one of those things that it's very indicative of the pay to play culture, you know, and you're absolutely right about that. You need, in order to get the best possible training, you're going to have to uproot your life. And that's the sacrifice in it all. Now, monetarily, you're absolutely right. To make less than a first year teacher for, to, <laughs> that, let's put it in perspective. To put it to to make less than a first year teacher for meddling in the Olympics, bro, get the fuck out of here with that. So monetarily, it doesn't make any sense. Financially, it doesn't make any sense. Now, patriot, you know, nationalistic patriot patriotism. Yeah, so you're. Th- that makes up for it. The endorsements is where you're going to make it, but you got to win. You absolutely have to win. You know, like Shakari Richardson won. Noel Watt, Mo Lyles got a gold medal. Simone Biles, the, she got three. So that's three golds, not just three medals, three golds. And then you have a kid like Quincy Hall, a kid. This dude is 16 years old. He's a freaking junior in high school. He's like, I got to go to, uh, you know, I'm in Paris. I'm hanging out with Snoop. I'm ha- I'm, I'm at this gold medal party. I'm hanging out with, you know. Well, they're, they're, I'm actually to- glad you brought that up. And then you get you get a guy like Snoop Dogg. How much was Snoop making for being in part of the Olympics? Wasn't he making it, like $500,000 a day or something stupid like that? I, I don't know what his day rate was for the Olympics to be the mascot. But effectively, Snoop Dogg was the American mascot. And then the last day was Tom Cruise. <laughs> just I, I just didn't understand that until the end when he did the handoff yes, to 2028. So, yes, yeah, so uh, Snoop Dogg was paid five hundred thousand dollars a day, plus expenses to be at the Olympics. That's wild. Am I missing something? Where are fucking values? Where are where are values? like I don't know. But um, and moving on. Uh, so Team USA basketball won gold. Yes, they did. And when Steve Kerr needed to win in the medal games, he went with Curry, Booker, AD, LeBron, KD. That was his team. How should defending champion Tatum feel about his role on Team USA? He played 11 minutes in that final game. He was 1 for 3. 0 for 1 from 3. Two points. You can't feel great. You can't feel great about that performance. But in fairness to Jason Tatum, who really had a, a big time performance besides Steph Curry? Steph Curry, who lit it up for 24. Still, well, like the, well, hold on. What are you talking about? You're talking about in the gold medal game? I'm talking about the, the game. I'm talking, I'm talking about the gold medal game. I'm just, oh, talk, okay, I'm just yeah. talking about that game. Yeah, I mean, Curry, yeah, Curry definitely lit it up in the, in, but every, but I feel like LeBron, KD, AD, and even Booker had their moments in the medal games and leading up to the gold medal games where you can say, okay, like this, these guys came to play, you know? But in that gold medal game, four people, only four U.S. players were in double digits. That's, you know, that, that's a little bit of credit to, to France there. But only, you know, Steph, Devin Booker, LeBron, and KD were in double digits in points. Everybody else was a single. So, you know, LeBron ended up with a double-double. That's it. Everybody else had a, a single. So that, that's, where, that's where we are here. So, <sighs> moving forward, you figure LeBron's going to be 43 come 2028 
you figure Steph Curry's going to be 39. Anthony Davis is going to be what, 37, something like that, maybe older. Durant is going to be 39. These guys, it's going to clear out. You figure it's going to clear out or they're going to take a, they're going to take a back seat. They're finally going to kind of are change you surprised the by Are you surprised by Kerr, Kerr's team? Am I surprised by the fact that he relied on superstar athletes to do superstar athlete shit? Absolutely not. Am I well, Am I surprised well, that he relied on a guy that he's coached for years? Absolutely oh, not. Okay, yeah, right? that's, so, that's, a good, that's a good point. In crunch time, that, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised he went to Steph at all. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it, Bill Simmons and Doc Rivers talked on Bill Simmons' podcast about how it was pretty clear that once the metal game started, Steve Kerr had his team. Like he knew, he knew who he was going to use. Like, you know, and these, for whatever reason, these were the guys that were playing best together. Like, you know, and, and uh, there was no way to hide that. There was no way to sugarcoat it. Because, you know, what's his fit? You know, Tatum had some DNPs. Yeah. Tatum only played 11 minutes. Anthony Edwards didn't play much. You know, it just, it's just interesting <laughs> that I, I think, guess, I guess you make a good point in saying that, you know, Curry's his guy, of course. Yeah. Uh, and so is Durant. Durant was on, on those Warriors teams, too. Yeah. That's actually another good point. But, it, you know, it's like you had Curry. Durant, LeBron, KD, Booker, all these guys didn't make it far in the NBA playoffs at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? What's the common thread? But the other thing, Z, is like this was a different type of basketball. And, and I think there could be a point to be said where this was a better, more competitive basketball. The 10 minute quarters and. Every team you're playing against, I mean, let's say, out of the top five teams in the in the World Cup, or I'm sorry, in the Olympics, they were all star teams. I mean, the French team was no joke, and the scoring was much lower. Mm-hmm. It was better officiated. It was a better system. It was a better flow. Now, why wouldn't the NBA want to strive for that? Where, hey man, it doesn't have to be like only one or two. You know, all star teams. Every NBA team could be an all star team if we didn't have as many teams, right? And then every night we would be getting this, especially if we cut the season down. We'd be getting this all the time. Uh, if Anthony Rendon, if only Anthony Rendon was the NBA commissioner. Oh my, it's 60. <laughs> uh, wrap this shit up. Let's wrap it up. Wrap it up. Eight, wrap eight, it up. 82, I got, too long. I got things to do. 82, to too long. Let's make this 49. It's an arbitrary number, 49. Um, no, you're, you're right. There's a level, you know, why are we not getting this in the NBA? Because it's oversaturated. You have 30 teams. Now, granted, in, in this tournament, you had pool play. So you, you definitely had more of like a World Cup style, you know, round, you, know, you had a round robin to get in. But the NBA season is grueling. It's hard to watch. And that falls on the players and that falls on Adam Silver. So at the end of the day, Adam Silver lets the, the players run the show, right? You have the, the load management situations. You have the, the constant will they, won't they play. The uncertainty on a given night as a fan is kind of ridiculous. The fact that you have to incentivize your athletes to play with this in-season tournament. You know, now we've got the uh, the opening of the in-season tournament is Clay's return to Golden State. That's going to be the hi- one of the highlights of it. So th- there's that coming up. But you know, the NBA is extremely flawed. At the end of the day, it's a business, and they made some business decisions, and ultimately you're paying for it with the product. They're raking in the cash. They're absolutely raking in the cash with the TV deal and the exorbitant contracts and the global exposure. You know, Steph Curry's a global name. LeBron's a global name. 
Anthony Davis, global, right? But you're paying for it with a substandard product. I'd rather have something like the international game. So the, the international game is way more competitive. But competition doesn't always, you know, it, it, competition isn't always what's on the forefront and what's always the motive of the NBA in terms right. of certain decisions. Right. Hey there, NFL football fans. This is the lovely Rita Sanchez, a.k.a. your option football champ for the 2023 NFL season. I'm inviting you to join us for the 2024 option, where we pick the winning teams for each week's matchups and compete against each other to see whose picks reign supreme. Are you in? Head over to CBS Sports and search for the option 2024 league or hit the link in the bio on the Fade Route socials and join today. It's for free. Pick a witty name, some winning teams, and I'll see you out there for week one. Well, football season is in full effect. Speaking of boneheaded decisions. (laughs) And we're getting a chance to check out new players on new teams. But we're also getting a chance to check out the new kickoff rule. So, after seeing every preseason game so far, what are your thoughts? Well, for those of you that haven't seen this, let's let's kind of break it down for you. It is the XFL rule. The second XFL, not the first XFL. There's no scramble for the ball where somebody can possibly tear an ACL. Instead, the kicking team has to be aligned on the 40-yard line. (laughs) Everybody except the kicker. So, they can't move until the ball hits the ground or lands in the end zone or if the player in the landing zone, there's a there's a landing zone now if it if they catch it the fuck why are we making this so needlessly complicated what the fuck <laughs> what, what the fuck so two players can line up in the landing zone for the receiving team you can't you know you you the, the idea of the gunners and everything that's that's over they, you know that that's everything that you knew about the kickoff is over. It's over, John. So everything you liked about the kickoff is over. It's over. So this is what they're they're trying to do. And is it going to reduce injuries? Probably because nobody's moving. Like nobody's actually doing anything athletic. So <laughs> just standing around, butts. So I just. <laughs> That's a good reference. I like that. It's a deep cut right there. <laughs> I just, you know, it, it makes absolutely no sense. And I think this is probably going to end up being a one and done scenario. But like, just trying to explain it gets more confusing by the second. So I just, oh, oh, I'm just exasperated. I'm exasperated by all of this. It's stupid. It's neutralizing kick returns. It may minimize injuries. Like that's the only that's the only saving grace here. But I don't know. It's just stop. You're you're doing you're doing too much. Stop doing to football what they did to baseball. Just stop. Yeah. Stop. So I'm. I mean, the thing is, is like uh, it's an eyesore. It just it doesn't look like professional football, right? No, no it, it looks like something The Rock thought of after getting hit in the head with a chair. <laughs> Um, I mean, how how about this? How about this? How about we do this instead of this weird alignment and this drop zone and landing zone and all this stuff? How about if it if a if a kicker is able to kick it through the uprights, right? The team has to start at the twenty, okay? Mm. And if you kick it through the end zone, the team starts at the twenty-five. And I say, if you want to throw some player safety in there, say, okay, you could also elect not to kick and the teams get the ball at the third. How about that? 
and really just leave the kickoff and the return for bad weather, right? Or, you know, because this is just stupid. It just it just looks bad. It looks bad. Is college football doing this? No, right? No. Yeah, it just looks terrible. Like, it just... And, it, and you know, I mean, I always said that at a pro level, like, sure, this probably works in the XFL. It's probably wonderful. But at a pro level, n- no player is going to get more than 8 or 10 yards because these are professionals... And, you know, there's there's no way to block a player for that long and create a wedge and create movement and get them upfield. I understand you that the problem is, is they're trying to say this is about player safety, right? Yeah. It's not about player safety, right? Because if there was player, if it was about player safety, we wouldn't be adding more games to the docket, right? Um, I don't know. I just it just looks terrible. It just looks like, what are we doing? Like, why are we even doing this? Like, let's just not do it. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get to the point where they eliminate the kickoff entirely. I think that's where they want to go anyway. So if, if that's where you want to go, just fucking do it. Just just do it. Because at the end of the day... I would, hate to see, I would hate to see that part of the game, Z, leave, though, in its entirety. Like, why can't it be more of, like an optional thing. Or why don't we put less players on the field? Like, there's got to be a better way to make this safer than adopting this XFL rule because it just looks bad. I think, in, you know, initially we thought maybe this could work. Maybe it was a good idea. But I think it's just good for the XFL and it's good for, you know, a gimmickly league. It's a gimmick. I'm glad that you it's used a, that word because that's exactly it just, what it is. It just looks terrible. I mean, I know the Chiefs are talking about not even having Harrison Bucker kick it off. They're going to have one of their linebackers kick it off because why do we need him to kick it? We'll have one of our linebackers kick it and maybe get something out of it. Well, it's funny because if you if it was under your proposal, you'd want Harrison Butker kicking kick, kick it out there because it's a touchback, you know, right. that takes you to right. 20. Like, let's incentivize. Let's let's I think I think that makes it much more exciting if you incentivize parts of the field. Like, if a kicker could get it through the uprights from where he's kicking it, that's impressive. That's something to stay in the stands and watch and see if it happens. So the one thing I would say, the one pushback I would say is I would say move them back to where they used to kick from. Yes, yes, I agree with you. I agree. That's the other part I would put in there, right? And then the other thing is, like I said, is, like, give teams the option, like, if you're thin or you're hurt, your kicker gets hurt. If you feel like you can't afford to lose any more players today, then elect not to kick and give the ball to the team at the 30. There's your safety right there. That, that to me, is, is the safe option. Or maybe it is that they have this new Halo helmet or this new, like, this, this, this compression thing they're putting on everybody's helmet. Maybe all the people on the kickoff have to wear this. Yeah. How about that? And then right after the kickoff, it's a brief timeout so that the players that, that you know, um, are coming onto the field that don't want it on and they can take it off. It's a TV timeout after every kickoff. How about that? That works, right? That's what the whole point of this, this thing on their helmets is for because it's safer. There's your safety right there. What's the problem? Everybody's got to wear one. You want to like be on a kickoff team? Everybody got to wear it. Or how about this? The players on the kickoff team, you can have eight players on a kickoff team that don't count towards your roster spot. Well, I don't know. There's got to be a better way to do it than, than this garbage they're toting out there. Like it's like, it, and they're, they're so proud of it and the arrogance of it all. It's, it's, it's so terrible to watch. I can't even watch. Who's going to watch that? I'm not going to watch it. I can guarantee you we haven't spoken to coach, but I can imagine coach Westoff is having a fucking shit fit having to, to deal with this crap. I don't know. Maybe he embraces the challenge as a special teams coach, but like you know, the kickoff is one of the most exciting plays in in football. Used to be. How are you going to not like so? So let me. How are you just not going to? How are you going to take it out like that? It's just. It's just so bad. It's. It's terrible. I don't. I don't like it at all. I don't like the way it looks. And they gotta. They gotta do something. You gotta do something. They do. The problem is, is that everything that they've tried to do is just absolutely like blown up in their face. 
So, you know, you're just trying to, you, you end up reducing well, I like return. Fir- I, like the, I like the first rule they brought in where I think they were saying, you know, you can't, because players used to hold hands. Oh, you know, yeah, you no, create like a wall of like no. four or five players. I mean, that's fair to get rid of that. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah, you don't need the wedge. No, yeah, I agree. You don't need the wedge. Well, the other thing you could do is why why not, you know, um, you could also prevent the buildup of speed, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe it's that, you know, they don't – I know we have it right now. There's like an engagement zone. But maybe players don't start from the 60 and run down. Maybe they start a little closer, you know. But the idea that you have a drop zone and a landing zone and, you know – and then the other thing is is I was seeing players move before the ball was caught or before the ball dropped. And I didn't see anybody call that. Right. It's, it's like there's no – there's. It's there's so many rules. It's just like there's a simpler way to do this. It doesn't have to be so fucking complicated. They're going to it's do football, to this. Man. They're going to do to this what they did with the catch. You can't. I think they. I think they called Rob Manfred on this one. How can we fuck up football, Rob? You're doing a great job of fucking up baseball. How can we fuck up football? How much time you got? <laughs> How much have time you, you got? The Rocks League. I think the Rock is onto something. <laughs> You know, like when you're doing this, inst- I would rather, you know, I-, I know it's barbaric and I know it's like Neanderthal. Why are the but the Mets are getting kicked in their head in by the A's right now. Yeah. What the f*** is going on? Well, yeah. What's Neanderthal? What are you saying? The sprint to get the ball from the original XFL. At least there was some drama there. Oh, like this- I like that idea. That yeah. was fun. Except, the, the you know, one of the first plays that where it happened the scramble the opening scramble somebody blew out their knee so you got to really be careful about and another that. person like tore their east they tore their labrum or something yeah because they fell on their arm yeah Maybe so it, it is dangerous the same the same person can't do it how about this you know what if you're gonna get rid of the kickoff rule then just get rid of it and say okay the visiting team gets the ball that's it but I think the team would... gets the ball to start the game, and if we go to overtime, the home team gets the ball first. That's it. Yeah. So or the home team gets to the side. How I about think, that? I think that would you know the opening coin toss would make the most sense. You know, I'm you're, so you're... sick of the fucking coin toss too. That's another thing that's got to go. <laughs> I mean, they're going to defer but, anyway, so why even bother? Just so, like I said, let the the home team, the home team doesn't the visiting team gets the ball. And then the home team will get the ball if it goes into the the extra innings. Yeah, That's so it. in overtime, something like that. Well, yeah, overtime. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, even something like to, to kind of tweak the original XFL rule. You put the ball to 50. You have each player line up on their respective 30 and sprint for the ball. Whoever gets, whoever gets possession of it. It's a race. It's a friggin' foot race. But where the XFL got it wrong originally is that it was like... It was like in a, in at the same time co- going in the same direction, right? Mm. There was like oh, two lanes. So you're gonna have them. You're gonna have them coming from opposite directions to get this ball. Yeah. Some people are just gonna blast other people. So if you value your knees and you see a guy diving on top of the ball, you're gonna jump. You're gonna mm. jump. And get the fuck out of the way. Like, that's what you're mm. gonna do. So you know it's got to be something because the the rules not working. You've kind of bastardized kicking. Anyway, so try something. I mean, you're, you're you're grasping at straws. You're trying everything. So why not try that one too? And speaking of grasping at straws, the New York Jets are looking clownish again. Dun, 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 the Jets traded for defensive end Hassan Reddick from the Eagles back in late March, and Reddick signed with the team on April 1st. He was in the building in Florham Park, and then and physical. had his physical, had his press conference, that showed up, wanted his extension. Yeah, that no, nothing has really materialized. He has not been back to Florham Park since. So, first he was demanding his extension, which he did not get, and now he wants a trade, to which Joe Douglas has said, we are not trading him. And they're finding him. And they're finding him. He'll be, he's already accrued close to a million dollars in fines. That, that's that's a way to ingratiate yourself. You can't take to, these fines away because he's not on his rookie deal. So you can't take his these fines away. And Jesus Christ! So this is a <laughs> this is a 
this is a game of chicken. This is a game of chicken between the Jets and Hassan Reddick. One that Rich Semini seems to think the Jets have the leverage in. Do you agree with Rich Semini? I don't. I don't see. I don't see it. I don't see it at all. But but how how is this not worked out when you were trying to make this trade? The reason why the Eagles were trading him is because he wanted ridiculous amounts of money extension because he feels his time has come like he's been a good player for an amount of time and it's a, it's his time to get his bag. And they didn't want to give it to him, so they traded him for a sixth round pick because they just wanted him off the team because they could not pay him. <laughs> and if you decided that you had worked things out or you had figured things out, you should have signed this extension as soon as the trade happened. Why did we wait so long? This is, the, this is you know, everyone wants to talk about how, how well he drafted and how well he put these teams together. People fail to realize how bad he does on other things. Like, he <laughs> missed on a lot of players. He's brought in a lot of players that have wasted people's time. And this is a terrible, terrible trade. This is such a joke. Now, Z, let me explain something to you. All Bryce right. Huff. Uh-huh. Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff is making $17 million per year. Is Hassan Riddick better than Bryce Huff? I would say so. I, I would say so. So he wants more than $17 million per, per year. Newsflash, Bryce Huff was on the fucking Jets, and now he is on the Eagles. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Daniil Hunter is making $29 million a year. Is, Daniel, he, as good as, is he as good as Daniil Hunter? Probably not. Uh, no. Is no. he 60% of Daniil Hunter? That's fair. I could say so. Is he 70% of Daniil Hunter? Yeah. Probably. Is he 80%? We could probably argue yes or no there. That's the kind of money he's looking for. Like, he's not going to take less than that. Nick Boza is making $34 million per year. Is he Nick Boza? No. No. Is he 60% of Nick Boza? Yeah. 70%? Yeah. So that's the kind of money he's looking for. If you're not going to pay him this money, then cut him or trade him. And I don't know who would take him at this point because he hasn't practiced and he wants to get paid. You basically have to wait for someone to get hurt now to trade him. And you've wasted everybody's time, including his. And the other part is, is like, who who is going to now be, because you were banking on this guy coming in and being your pass rusher. So who's going to step up? Will McDonald? Really? That's who we're going to leaky foe to? <laughs> Solomon Thomas? Who's stepping up to get Hassan Riddick type production? Well, here's the like, problem too. They traded John Franklin Myers. Yeah, I know. They traded him to the Broncos. <laughs> Dude, I just don't. It's not hard. Like, this should have been talked about. If you weren't going to be able to extend him, if you weren't going to be able to do it that day, then why bother? Yeah. Like, for instance, Z, Brandon Ayuk. If Brandon Ayuk gets traded, he's not going to leave the place that he's going to until he signs an extension. He won't show up. The trade won't happen. Right. Why would you think that you had any other power or any other ability to do something outside of the normal here? I just, it's no. just not this hard, Z. It's not yeah, this the, hard. It is. It oh, yeah. Is uh, we'll trade him to Brandon Ayuk. Uh, we'll, we'll give you that extension, Brandon, when we get around to it. Oh, motherfucker, I ain't practicing until I get my money. Well, this is the well, problem. You're negotiating with an idiot. That's, that's the problem. Joe Douglas. Who's the, who? Joe oh, Douglas. Oh, yeah. Like, like, I don't... Like, what made you think he would take... Le- so, so, Z, just to put things in perspective, he's only scheduled to make $14 million this year. Yeah. 14 so and a quarter. So, do you see his side? Yeah. Do you see Hassan Riddick's side of this argument? I see that... I mean, he's undervalued at 14 and a quarter, you know, like, yes, that, right, yeah. right. He's, and, and he's been a good player for a decent amount of time and it's just time for him to get paid. Like he's seeing everybody else get paid. He wants his big contract. He wants to get paid. Otherwise I'm not going to play football. 
Well, the, the thing is, is that he's it's not going to be with the Jets. So that's for damn sure. If you keep no, if you not. keep going about this, like there have been there have been th- three players, three or four players that have requested trades and have poisoned the well with the Jets under <laughs> Joe Douglas, Jamal Adams. Say what you will about Jamal Adams, the Jets won that trade. So they did. They did. They did. So he, they won that they one. Did. So just like Brody Van Wagenen won the Edwin Diaz trade, like okay, you you get one, and it was his first one, and then everything else has gone to shit. Denzel Mims, adios. Elijah Moore, <laughs> goodbye. We hardly knew you. Like, this is what happens. Like he's he's gonna get dealt. Hassan Reddick is gonna get dealt. The question is to who? They're not stupid enough to trade him in the AFC. Well, then again, it's the Jets. So they may very well trade him to the fucking AMC, AFC. I don't even see a way that he could step into that locker room at this point. No. Like, he hasn't been there. He hasn't gone to camp. He didn't go to OTAs. He hasn't done anything but take a physical on April 1st. He's not a Jet. Like, how is he, even if they resolve this, how is he going to walk into that building? And when is he even going to be able to play? Like I just He's probably not gonna be in shape till like week seven. I, I would say he's pro- I would say probably week seven. But you know, Aaron Rodgers wants him there. So like what are you gonna do? How are you gonna make your quarterback happy? Because you don't have any fucking money. You don't have any money to pay this guy. So, you know, is he's Aaron Rodgers is Aaron, he is. He's from he's from Camden. He's from friggin' that's why Philly was a homecoming. Camden's like twenty minutes outside of Philly. So it's like, okay. This is. A, are you going to renegotiate your contract, Aaron, to free up some money to pay Hassan Reddick? Well, the other part, Z, is his value is now diminished, right? It's like the the Jets traded him for a sixth round pick. They're not getting that. No, you're not going to get that. Why? Should, we're not giving you anything, and we can't pay him. Well, we don't want to pay him. Here's my like, deal. I, there's one more thing that we need to take into account here. Matthew Judon is talking his way out of New England too. So, mm-hmm. who would you rather have, Matt Judon or Hassan Reddick? Judon. Judon, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I would rather do that. Now, those former Ravens can always play really well. Yeah, so that's the thing. I would rather have Matthew Judon. It's going to be a problem for Hassan Reddick. He's probably not going to get moved until Judon gets moved, if Judon gets moved. Now, that kind of, it, it also kind of plays the into the market. The other ugly part about this is he's got all these Lines that are not you can't rescind them. No, you're poisoning the well. You're poisoning the well, and, and both sides are. It's a game of chicken. It's an absolute game of chicken. Who's going to blink first? But see, I don't think I don't think it's both sides. I'm on Hassan Riddick's side. I'm on his side. Like I, it's time for me to get paid. So yes, these but are the you, numbers. But you can you you have an agent for that reason. You you can negotiate in camp. It's not this it, this forced choice of I'm gonna either s- I'm gonna stay away, or you know I'm just gonna withhold service. You don't have to. You can. That's what the agent does. That's it, literally his job is to negotiate. You you yeah, can, you can get ready. Go, but, but Z Z, you're not gonna. He's not gonna go out there on a one year deal. No, but he's also gonna be in football shape for his next team. He might be doing stuff on his own. But he ain't going to go there and work with that team because then if he gets hurt there, then he's going to he's ruining his career. Like, I'm with him. But what's what's a realistic number for him? Well, what's a realistic number for him? What's what what if you're if you're Joe D or if you're let, even let no, let's change it. If you're his agent, if you're his agent, Joe D calls you. He's like, listen, I just want him here. Yeah. What's it going to cost? How I'm do we gonna, get this done? What are you looking at? What do you need? I'm going to want Nick Bosa money. I'm going to want the Neil Hunter money. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to want between 29 and $31 million. I ain't going to get 29 to $31 million because he's not that guy. So he's not. He's not. And he's, so he's if, coming off of a down year. He wasn't even that great. Right. That so if I'm offered like 22 and a half, 23, like, okay. How many years? He is, let's see how old he's he 29. is. He's 29. 29. He's entering the prime of his career. Okay, so you're looking at three or four. I'll get one more big contract, possibly. Three with an option for four. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't laugh at that. 
I, I'll tell you right now. I would want one number, more bite at the apple. This is my number. My number is I want five year, twenty five million dollar per year mm-hmm. to play for the Jets. To play for any other team, I want what you just said. I want a three year, a twenty two and a half. Yeah, that's that's the way I would do it because I would feel I don't want to go here anymore. <laughs> I don't want to go here anymore. Like you never wanted you've poisoned, to. You, you, you've poisoned this situation. You made this thing shit. Like I don't want to play here. Like you're kidding me. Give me you because I, I don't. I find it very hard to believe that his side is the side that's changed their story. No, not yet. Because the Philly already knew. Hey, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to pay you, and we're gonna have to trade you. And I find it hard to believe that he told the Jets, okay, yeah, I'll come here if you give me this much money, you know, for this many years. I, I find, And him saying, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I mean, the market, I guess, did change a bit, but I find it hard to believe that he would double back on that. Did he really think he got, he got them stuck? Also, it's his neck of the woods. He's from Jersey. Yeah. It's not like you're going to, like, Minnesota. Or you're going to Seattle, like he's he's staying. He could probably still live in his house wherever he lives, and and still do the drive or whatever. So it just it makes it. it I, I very I I do think it happened on the Jets side. I think you know from whatever signings they were doing and whatever roster moves they were doing, they're like, listen, I know we told you we were going to do this much, but can we do this much and we'll throw you in a bonus? Like next year or something like that. We'll make it up to you in other ways. And I'm sure they're like, he's like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> fuck no. I don't think so. No, no, I no. don't think so, bitches. But let's think about this. If they're somehow, if they do, finally, if Joe Douglas finally relents and says, okay, go seek a trade. Like where, what is the market for him? Dallas. Dallas? I call Dallas. Yeah, yeah I, I call Dallas. That's who I'd call. Because I, if I'm going somewhere else, now I can't get my bag. I can't. Because right. this is the only place that I was going to get my bag because I they promised me my bag. So now I just need to go somewhere and ball out and and I'll get I'll get my money in another way. So yeah, I'm looking at I'm lo- I want to go to Dallas. Uh I'll go to Miami. I'll go yeah, to, Joe, Joe Douglas isn't going to trade within division, let alone have, conference. He might not have a choice, dude. Oof. He might if he wants anything back in return. He's not going to have a choice. Tampa Bay. He might, have to cut, he might have to cut this guy. Tampa Bay. Yeah, I'll go to Tampa Bay. Detroit. Yeah, yeah I'll go to Detroit. But Detroit. Detroit has something, so they're not going to. They're not going to mess with that. Minnesota might be interested. Minnesota the Falcons. Falcons. Mm, Falcons, interesting. Falcons. Go to Atlanta. Play yeah. Atlanta. Cool. I, I think that would be. I, I think. Yeah, they those... love making deals with Green Bay. Oh, Green Bay. <laughs> they love to fleece you. Oh my God. Go to yeah. Green Bay. I mean, I, I know the Rams are missing a pass rusher. Maybe they want to yeah. get. Maybe they want to yeah. get on. And... I don't, they don't have. They don't have any fucking. They have nothing to give you. You know, a third <laughs> round pick in twenty seventy two. Like that's what you're gonna get. But they, they, they're not a team that's in the market for that. Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much. With FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their graphic tees, hoodies, snapbacks, accessories, and more. Go to fckclout.com today and check out current season and past season merchandise for men and women. Get it while you can. That's fckclout.com. Check them out today. fckclout.com. Moving over to baseball, emerging Red Sox star Jaron Duran was suspended and fined last week for uttering anti-gay comments to a fan in the stands in Houston as the Astros took on the Red Sox. It's a bad look, Z. Can Duran rebound from this slipping character? So you said Anthony Rendon earlier. I'm going to say it's John Rocker. Like it's that, it's that level of, of bad. You know, it's, 
almost. So you're saying I'm a bitch. I'm saying I'm saying you're a friggin' homophobe. <laughs> if that if that word comes if that word leaves your lips, like even in a fit of anger, the fact that that word so freely came out of your mouth is a problem. It, that's a that's a major yeah. problem. So you gotta you gotta really do some soul searching. You gotta do some sensitivity training. You have to reach out, do do some community outreach. You have to rebuild your trust. You know, you need you need to rebuild your standing in the community. And not just the Boston community, but the LGBTQ community too. Because you that's a that's a ridiculously homophobic slur that you just casually casually let escape your lips because a guy was chanting that you need a tennis racket to hit the ball. Those things don't equate. Like that, I mean, it, it's never okay. Let's just, uh, I'm just making that very clear. Uh, that word is never okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got you got to be a pro. You got to be a pro, and that was not a pro move. And um, I don't think I don't think a person at I don't think something someone does at their lowest defines them. So I do think he will have ample opportunity to rebound from this. And be better for it. And there has to be a. You're a professional. You're a professional baseball player. You wear a city and a. You wear a city on your head and a city on your chest. He's not even paid. He's only making like seven hundred thirty thousand dollars this year. I say only, but you know. So he got hit with a seven eight hundred dollar fine, which is rightly said. He's missing games, but you listen. There's no excuse for it, especially now. There's just no excuse for talking like that or saying things like that. If you you gotta walk away, you gotta step away, you gotta ignore it. You need to wear ear earbuds so you can't hear what people are saying to you. You could do things like that. You could talk to. I'm sure the team has a psychologist, but you can't attack fans and you can't say stuff like that. It's just it. You, there's no excuse for it. There's Absolutely none. not. Absolutely not. Now, well, you can argue whether or not the two games and the fine was sufficient. But I think it's fine. He did come out and apologize. He did. It was a sincere apology, not to not a I'm sorry for those who were offended. Like that's the lamest of lame apologies, and that really you're really not apologizing to anybody when you make a statement like that. So. You know, he is a young man and his teammates have his back, which is, which is important. Uh, Rob Ref Snyder came out and said, we all love him. He'll learn from this. We're all human. We all make mistakes, but he'll learn from this. And I would say so. I, I, if you're going to be professional and this is what's going to come, people are going to heckle you. Right. People are that, that right. come, it comes with the job, but like, that's what you know. Like we like to joke about Anthony Rendon, but he the, the you're saying I'm a bitch thing. It, it's from heck. He was being heckled by a fan. Like you, you need Whoa. as a pro, as a pro, you need to not have thin skin, and you can't have rabbit ears. Those are two things that you cannot well, I other, have. I think the other part is, is like, you know, in the NBA, some of them have fun with it. They'll talk back, but they're not derogatory or they're not, you know, they're, they're not, you know, mis- misogynist like that. Like, you can't do that. You know, if you want to have fun with it, you can have fun with it, but that's, that's not okay. You can't talk like that to, to a fan, a paying fan. You know, this is somebody that's coming to see their team play. Not to come to see you play. They're coming to see their team play. And you're the visiting team. Like, you represent Boston. You represent the city of Boston. And you can't... You can't do that. Yeah. And you know what? Like, Boston hasn't exactly had a glowing record on... You know, certain on relations. Yeah, no, you know, no, their, right. their their social right. history is not great. So no. you know, Jaron Duran has some work to do 
he he at least acknowledges that he made a mistake. He at least acknowledges that he never should have said it. And it was unprovoked. It was uncoerced. And he can learn from it. He can learn from it. We also have to learn from it at, in a, at a larger macro level, on a social level. Like, we have to be better as well as a society and as fans. Like, there's a fan code of conduct. You can't be saying shit like that. You can't be inciting. You can't be inciting a response. Yes, the response was extreme. Yes, the, the response was uncalled for. You you know, like we all have to be better. We all have to be better. But Jaren, Jaren Duran, absolutely inexcusable. And kudos to Boston. Kudos to Major League Baseball. You acted swiftly. You acted appropriately. And maybe this is the wake-up call. Hopefully, this is the wake-up call that he needed. When owning a home, it's important to have heating and cooling professional available when things go wrong. Air Care Technicians is a veteran-owned HVAC company servicing the Westchester area. They are licensed to service, repair, maintenance, and replace all HVAC units. If your unit is not running properly or you would like to improve the air quality in your home, contact Air Care Technicians for a free quote. They offer same-day and emergency services for all of your needs. You can reach them at 914-315-1547. Air Care Technicians, 914-315-1547. Bullshit or no shit? We're going to debunk this week's most controversial topics right All right, boys and girls, we have a statement, and it's either bullshit or no shit. Bullshit or no shit number one. Tyreek Hill could beat Noah Lyles in a 100-meter race. If Noah Lyles has COVID, maybe. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I think 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 Olympic athletes are elite in their arena, and I don't think even a professional athlete could step into an Olympic arena and perform at that level. So I'm going to say bullshit. I am going bullshit too for a couple reasons. So let's start with Tyree kills 40 time. Tyree kills a four, two, nine, 40. That's what he ran. That's 40 yards. A hundred meters is a hundred point nine yards. So that, that's where he would need to be. Noah Lyles ran his 100 meters in 9.79 seconds. 9.79 seconds. Yeah. So blink and you miss it. If you do a quick conversion, being the math teacher, you know, you want to you do the, the numerical conversion. When you equate times between a 40 yard, his 40 yard time and what it would be in 100 yards, it would be 11.72. So he's getting dusted by two full seconds. So it's absolute bullshit that Tyreek Hill can beat Noah Lyles. He may train for it. He could possibly train for it, but... At, at this point in time, absolutely not. Like, think about what DK Metcalf does, right? He, he tries to train track, and he tried to qualify for the Olympic team. He's fast. Track athletes are another animal. Track athletes are on another level. Ask Robert Griffin. Robert Griffin will happily tell you how much better of an athlete a track athlete is. Regardless of sport. Track 
you're constantly, you are pushing yourself to limits and you are transcending into uh, a matter of seconds. Seconds. So, no, not even close. Not even close at all. Bullshit or no shit. Number two, the Houston Astros are the team to beat in the American League. Man, this has been quite the resurgence. I will go on record and saying I was wrong about this team. I thought they were dead in the water. But now we see that not only are they in first place in their division, but they're one of the best teams in the American League. Um, it's unbelievable how good the the Guardians have been. I mean, I think they were tied for the best record in the league for a while. Uh, so I'm I'm going to say that I still think. You know what? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're a problem. I think the Astros are hard, are hard out. So I'm going to say no shit. It's close. It's definitely close. I think we're in agreement that the Yankees and the Orioles are very flawed teams. <laughs> and I'm being polite. Flawed teams, but they have the two best records in baseball. That's what getting off to a hot start does. Mm -hmm. You can weather the storm a little bit. Getting off cold leaves you like the Mets and the Braves. Eh. Kind of like (laughs) scrambling. The Padres. Like barely the the Diamondbacks. They're just finally getting out of it. So it gives me pause because of the pitching. Verlander's hurt. Javier's hurt. Or Keedy. McCullers isn't pitching again. That rotation's not good. That's not great. You have Valdez, Brown, Blanco. The bats are going to carry. The bats are going to play. It's what they do. I'm... If the Seattle Mariners... Another team that's not getting any love. Seattle Mariners are 63-56. and 56. They have one more loss than the Astros. Now, they just, they beat down the Mets this weekend. (laughs) This team who couldn't hit for shit now, you know, put a dozen up up on Sunday night. So, if the Mariners could ever get their shit together, they'd be dangerous. Because that pitching staff plays. And the Guardians, you, you mentioned them already, they don't get any love. For whatever reason, they don't get any love. Stephen Vogt is doing a hell of a job. Stephen Kwan doing a hell of a job. Even the Twins, man. Like, the Twins are still hanging around this thing. Now, when it comes October, we know they're going to fold like a cheap suit because that's what the Twins do. I mean, that, that's what the Twinkies do. So, it's hard for me to, to, to say no shit. It really is because there's a lot of there's a lot of parody right now at the top and you can really look at these teams and you can point out some really significant flaws but I feel like you can do that across baseball but you love the Phillies right you love the Phillies this year they're not doing Indeed. that great right now. they just got their ass beat by the Diamondbacks so the Diamondbacks like I mentioned they just crawled out from. they're crawling out from under a terrible start the Mets have been up and down all year. The Braves have been ravaged by injury. They're barely hanging on. This has been one of those weird seasons, right? And even the Dodgers, as good as the Dodgers are, they've had to deal with some significant blows. Now, River Ryan's out for the season. So, you know, whatever pitching depth they have is being challenged. 2024 baseball is really weird, but I'm going to go bullshit that the Astros are the best team because I think this is one of those years where there is no best team and it's going to be whoever's hottest at the end. And with those wild cards, it's going to play to that. So, I mean, the Astros have done a phenomenal job of staying in this. They were mostly dead. 
they managed to come back to life. So kudos to them. They were able to do that. But you're one of many. You're one of maybe six. That's not runaway for me. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today and check out our releases in apparel, accessories, drinkware, and more. Ever wanted an alleged superstar t-shirt? We got those. You want some yoga pants? We got those too. And we're not done yet. We have a lot of exciting collaborations and new products on the way. But check out what we have now at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ. Who is the best of the worst this week in sports? The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our X account at FadeRouteDNZ and our Instagram account at FadeRoutePodcast. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this here show and takes home the coveted ass trophy. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy, D? I don't. If you smell what The Rock is <laughs> cooking. I smell decommissions from the Army Rock, and I smell a lawsuit. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for Alleged Superstar of the Week, D? All right. So first up, I've got GM of the New York Jets, Joe Douglas. How do you trade for Hassan Reddick without being 100% sure he was going to show up for training camp, for OTAs, and for the 2024 season? Joe Douglas, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And number two, Jason Tatum. In the gold medal game, 11 minutes, one for three, two points. And you're a defending NBA champion. Right. Jason Tatum, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, Jaron Duran. Uttering a gay slur at an Astros-Red Sox game is not professional, bruh gotta be better just do better jaron duran you are my alleged superstar of the week what do you got z great choices all very good choices you can't go wrong with any of them i'm gonna start with the new york mets (laughs) what a weekend it was (laughs) oh my god in your three game sweep you managed to score one run. You got swept by the Mariners who are a good team. They're a good team. They're in the middle of this. But you were outscored 22 to 1. Pete Alonso over 13. Terrible. Absolutely atrocious. 22 to 1. They're, that team is not that much better than you. They're not twenty run, 21 runs better than you. You make Cal Raleigh look like fucking Cal Ripken. Like he's hitting bombs on Sunday night. Big Dumper just took a dump all over you. New York Mets, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, Olympic gymnastics scoring. Can we figure this stuff out by now? Now, there's an issue with the Romanian gymnast and American Jordan Childs over the score. And did somebody step out? Was there a fault? Uh, The Americans lodged their complaint four seconds, four seconds after the allotted time. Now, your in a situation where 
She didn't have the bronze, but then Childs won the bronze, and now she's probably not going to win the bronze again, even though the Romanian the Romanian Olympic Federation said, we, we'll share. We'll just fucking share at this point because your scoring system was so atrocious and you did such a bad job of refereeing this whole thing. So, yeah. Need we say more? I'm shocked. Shocked that there's controversy with gymnastic scoring. <laughs> Olympic scoring. Olympic gymnastics officials. You are my alleged superstar of the week. And then last but not least. Oh, that Australian breakdancer. That Australian breakdancer was so terrible. How terrible was she? She got dragged online. She got absolutely trolled. She got uh, the Elaine from Seinfeld treatment. She got the Peter Griffin treatment. (laughs) So you got that. And to make matters worse, breakdancing is now out of the 2028 Olympics. (laughs) So we can say that that performance single-handedly fucked it up for everybody. Party's over. Max fucked it up for everybody. Time to go home. Shut it down. Let's go home. (laughs) Shut it down. Let's go home. (laughs) Oh my god. The Australian breakdancer. It's just something. It was uh, it was a thing of beauty in its it was in its train (laughs) wreck. And it's pure train wreck. Raygun. That's her name. Raygun. Who apparently has a PhD in rhythmic studies. Who knew there was such a thing? Well, Doc, I think you may need to go back to school. Raygun, the Australian Olympic breakdancer. You are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we've said our piece. Go to our X account at DNZ. Go to our Instagram poll at Fade Drop Podcast and vote and vote and vote and vote and for our nominees. You're better than that. Just do better. Just do better. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay fade, everyone time for us to run the go route we'll talk to you next week Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review, rate us five stars, turn on subscription notifications, and share on social media. Tell your friends and spread the word.